So this is the Star Wars Artifact Edition or Artist Edition that I picked up for about 75 bucks at a local comic shop. I wasn't planning on getting it, but ran across it and it usually sells for like 125 ish dollars so i went ahead and got it funny because i am actually not the hugest fan of this or at least i wasn't when i was young that's why i never bought it uh the uh, actual individual comic that was drawn by howard shaken but now as i'm older i'm more of a howard shaken fan you know have gone back and read some of his more important work and it's interesting because he hates this book or th the comic book that he did for marvel he thinks that he, uh, quote, fucked it up. And if he would have known it was going to be famous, that he would have done a better job. But nobody knew it was going to be famous. Not George Lucas, not the cast, nobody. I'm meaning the movie, not even the comic book. Cool thing about it is that Shaken ended up drawing everything from the first Star Wars series, so the, the movie adaptation, without ever seeing one second of the film he had a lot of stills and if you guys have ever seen movie stills from around that time they i mean they may be in black and white they may be eight to a page they may be small they may be copied um even the press packet at the time was in you know had a bunch of black and white stills so it wasn't going to be too helpful uh, but they also gave him the macquarie paintings and what happened was he, he i guess made it look more like the stills um but Howard Shaken is not great with likenesses, even he says so. So it's a uh, it's a little bit different looking. I ended up picking this up because not only because of Howard Shaken, but also if you go down the list, which you probably can't even read on this thing, but uh, Gil Kane did some of the covers, uh, who was a mentor to Howard Shaken for a while. You also have Walt Simonson doing a guest issue, and I was actually not terribly fond of that one. Uh, and uh, Michael Golden, who did a great one. So this cover is uh, sort of a the bla hard, harder black and white version of the very first promotional painting for the movie that Howard Shaken did, uh, which is actually included in the book. It's very cool. The first page we have is page 10, which you can't quite see on the screen. But, you know, if, if you've seen Star Wars, you're probably familiar with the scene. Uh, the, so whenever Howard Shaken says he doesn't like this or he thinks he didn't do a very good job, I actually kind of agree in the in the first book. There are things I like about it a lot, actually. Like, I really like that Vader's this dark, looming presence that's very cool. You can see in a lot of the art, like, it, it's he's got, we'll call it loose or fast shading. Um, the, the lines, he didn't bother trying to make them even. He didn't bother trying to make them clean. And he inked himself in this first issue. And I think that the artwork is improved whenever he has a finishing artist and an inker later on. But it, it is something cool to see. And I don't think it's bad. It's just uh, not as clean, not as neat for something you expect from a, a movie adaptation, which usually suck. But one of the things that they tend to get right is the likenesses of the characters and keeping tight with that. And you can see that Vader is a little bit different looking like you know a little bit smaller eyes here it's still cool looking though lots of white out on stuff um especially on vader this is just shading but it looks like he kind of tried to correct the hand maybe not just shade it so you can see luke and this is his version of luke and you can see it again the squiggly lines like if you if you pay attention to like american flag or something like that with that Howard Shaken did, the, the lines are much neater, especially panels like this where you have the, like just scribbles to kind of shade. Again, not bad, kind of cool looking really in a way, but not exactly what I guess he wanted to do, even if, if he knew it was going to be such a big hit and he'd be known for this work, which isn't necessarily true. I mean, he talks about how this somewhat ruined his career, which is nonsense because most of the people who read this book are reading because of Star Wars not because of Howard Shaken. People who go out and try to find Howard Shaken, they find American Flag and they find Black Kiss and they find all of his seminal comic books, then they go, oh he did a Star Wars story or something like that or they appreciate the Star Wars story because he did it the, I don't think the fans overlap the way he thinks they do and you'll see a lot throughout this book he had a hard time drawing Banthas <laughs> it's kind of funny, like this is all whited out and redrawn, there are parts that have paste ups that are redrawn it's kind of interesting 
And again, can't even tell that these are hands really. But yeah, here's the paste ups with the uh, Banthas. So I guess he didn't draw. And there's white out on the top of the paste up. Like he had a hard time with these things. And also, I just, this would be an entire, this whole comic would be a nightmare to draw. He said he hated drawing it, or at least wasn't very fond of it. It was just a job to him. Uh, even through issue 10 when he quit because he said he was bored. But you're getting all these stills of all these characters. You're trying to get some likeness to him, even though he ended up developing a style that I that was really cool later on uh, for what the characters look like. But you're trying to get the Sand People to look right, the Banthas to look right. You're trying to get the characters to look like the movie actors. You're trying to get uh, the Speeder to look like the Speeder, the Millennium Falcon to look like the Millennium Falcon, as you can see here. Like all those things, and you'd have to reference every single one painstakingly as you deal with it. It would be terrible. This is probably drawn from a still. I think that's that looks just like it's from the comic. Now, cool thing about this page, uh, as you can see, it's in color. I I don't know why, but um, was it Stephen Orliff? He ended up coloring the pages. And it's weird because he was not a colorist for Marvel at the time. He didn't work for them. He didn't work for them for another year. So maybe he ended up on the series later. And then the owner of the artwork came back and was like, hey, can you color this? Because it doesn't, because it's colored pencil, I think. Yeah, it's colored pencil. So I don't think it's a color guide of any sort. It's just like the owner was like, hey, can you color this really amazing artwork by Howard Shagan? Uh, oh, inked by uh, uh Steve Leo Aloha, Steve Leo Aloha. Um, he did the uh, the inks, and I think it's just dramatically improved. Like, you know, it looks more careful. It it's cleaner. The hair, especially, is so much nicer looking. You can see it in Han Solo, especially. Um, the lines are even. It just looks neat, neater. I like that expression on Chewbacca. Chewbacca's not terribly expressive in uh, the film, obviously, because he has a mask on. But I do like that whenever you put him in a comic book, you can give him expression. You can give him uh, more of a human feel. But look how good... Like, this is... This is excellent. Like, this... This looks like Han. It doesn't have to look exactly like Harrison Ford, but you know it's Han, you know that's Luke. Olaf, not Orlif. Another color page by Steve Olaf. And I don't, again, don't really know why this happened, because it's colored pencil. Very cool, though. Extremely cool, actually. A little marker in here. Uh, there's some pages later on that he colors, and maybe in the next page, but that are markered. Like, they're, they're, they look like color guides. I think it's from issue four. This looks like Leia to me. This looks like Harry Fisher. And he you can see in a lot of the comics, like he, there's there's white out and there's all sorts of stuff that goes over the top of the original drawing to make it look like Carrie Fisher. Like she seemed to be much more of a focus for likeness than any of the other characters. Like as long as you knew it was Luke, as long as you knew it was Harrison Ford, it was good enough, but Carrie Fisher they tried to get look get to look like her. And I'm not sure if that was Howard Chaikin or if that was uh maybe the anchor or maybe even the editor coming in and saying, hey, look, you've got to make this look more like her. I see more, lots of white out on the face here. Might not be able to see it on the screen, but yeah, it's it's covered. This cover is very cool. They, they can't find the original, I guess. They mentioned there's a note in the front of the book saying that they included these covers because of historical significance, not because it's a artist rendition of it. It's cool, though. This page I, I'm also pretty fond of. It's kind of neat. Like, you get the, the setup of the shot where they're getting crushed by the compactor. You get wet Luke, because he got pulled under and then let go. More expressive features from Chewie there. And this is better than in the movie, I think. <laughs> it shows the bar break. Then it shows all the water rolling down Luke's face. More chewy expression, growling. And then more color. Uh, more Steve Olaf. Uh, very, it looks so good like this. I need to go look at the original comic 
and see how it compares to what happened in the comic. Even the, the letter outline is very cool. And see, there's sometimes you can tell he's referencing stuff. God, I can't imagine trying to draw stormtroopers not knowing really, not having a good feel for them like, I mean, I kind of do now in my life even, even R2. But just knowing that you have to draw them and then, riff, like, okay, what does it look like on the back? Where Can I find a picture of that? Yeah, and this is definitely referenced. It's almost the shot from the movie. Harrison going off, chasing all the stormtroopers. Incest kiss. So, this is much more romantic than it looked in the movie. Also, this is this is kind of fun. You can see the the Ames lettering guidelines on this. Um, this panel, I don't think works very well right here, just because I can't tell if he's throwing it up straight across where they're going. I mean, the the dialogue kind of explains it, but you don't really know what's going on until here. It's just it's kind of like a pickup shot in a movie where you just show the hand doing something. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This is like my favorite thing. Um, all the colors really work here. And this is the time where you can actually see that it's marker. Like you can see the the small amount of like where the marker has oversaturated the page a little bit more. So it's a little bit darker there. Gorgeous. All the, the coloring really works and the lightsabers look so cool with like the airbrush white over the top of them. More Vader looking ominous in that, that black silhouette. Good sword fighting here. Also, that looks better than uh, in the movie, in my opinion. Having him stand in front of the Millennium Falcon there instead of in just the hallway like he was in the uh, movie before the fight started. And he didn't make it. It was a very weird effect. I don't know if I like it or don't. Of course, then again, how did the artist shaken wouldn't have known what to do really more color again with the airbrush looks very cool not very much detail on the bottom of that nor shadow but you don't need it really you just gotta know hey that's the shape of the Millennium Falcon so that's the Millennium Falcon it's not touching the ground so therefore it's flying that's all you need to know. Plans for the Death Star. And then the Death Star behind him, I guess? It's an odd thing. More sibling kissing. I really didn't know what was going to happen. Makes Chewie's head look like Vader's helmet. You can see Big's dark lighter. Another reproduction of the cover. Nothing, not a high res image, but again, they just included it for historical significance. Also, it looks extremely cool. I like that. Well referenced. This is gorgeous I like the rendering on okay so they're in the cockpit surrounded by space so it's somewhat dark except for they're all under lit although you're kind of side lit really but this is cool look how well that's inked great inking all these lines are uniform which I could ink like that I wonder how much Chaken drew of this. Just take, I mean, I'm just, just fiddling and noodling and drawing these little shapes over and over, and then you have to make it to where the, you can see the motion of the X-Wings. Also, X-Wing action, very cool. I get why these guys are shaded so much. I don't know about that. Felt like doing it, I guess. And then we could see a very angry Vader take to the field himself. Got 
kind of a floating head overlap thing, like a movie poster. It's a really strong sequence. I guess they made it, uh, made Shaken aware how important it was going to be. And Luke saved him. Eh, for very long. I don't think anyone lived. Like, Wedge lived. I like this explosion effect in space. Very cool. Like in fades out into the dark, into, the, into space. It's cool. More extreme face shading. And this is probably, you know, pretty quick looking, but looks good. This guy's blown up with Kirby Crackle. Ooh, good chewy face. Look at that. Without the words, this probably wouldn't work. <laughs> Not that I know how to do this, to make this work. Like, how do you show him spiraling off into the distance? This looks like he's getting hit by a tractor beam, kind of. But, you know, he's whirling. So, language. This is where comics wouldn't work without words. Love that fur inking. I can steal that. Leah Aloha again, I guess. Really good. More shapes with shadows. Lots and lots of them. So I did this recently on a city. It just takes for freaking ever. So a lot of just labor. There's the exhaust port, I think. There's the rocket going into it. Torpedo. Eh, it works well enough. And again, just as long as you know who they are, it doesn't really matter if they look like Harrison Ford, because that does not look like Harrison Ford. Also, mullet. That's fine. Kind of weird. For Glenn. He must be who bought it. I do like how it... I like the space stuff. The space sequence was really strong. Like really good and then goodbye Death Star this probably looks better than it did in the original movie as well where the Death Star's there and then blinks out of existence you see a little great X-Wing great that's a good splash page doesn't need to be much doesn't need to be intensive drawing so much as repetitive drawing but you don't need to think too much about it, but this little swirl is really good. Yeah, this is strong. Alright, then here's the reunion. Also extremely well referenced on this one. So when I was telling you yeah, that Howard Chicken can reference people, apparently it's this page. <laughs> like he dedicates his life to it, or the inker does, because here you can see Harrison Ford's face is whited out and redrawn completely. Here, this is a copy of a still. So is that, I think. But, you know, you get the appropriate looks on the faces. Heroic Mark Hamill. And then it becomes an ongoing series after that. Unused cover. No idea why he's looking down on this. Like I like this guy a lot better on this one. New planets, new perils. Rarely detail on the bottom side of the Falcon. Kind of fun, showing little aliens. Oof, not a good chewy face. After so many strong ones in a row, that is not good. Airbrush. More airbrush. I like the use of airbrush from the inker. Uh oh, tractor beam. Nobody wants that. Space pirates. Okay, so without the film reference, uh, we get Colossus shoulder pads, 
literal cutlasses. Whatever the, the I don't know what's going on with the hair. Oh, some of this is not good. <laughs> At least doesn't age well. Again, not great. Good hand. Kirby Crackle. This is a wise choice not to use background on this busy panel. I don't know if that's supposed to be a Bantha, some other type of beast of burden, apparently, but just not referenced to anything, near as I can tell. So this is whenever you get Han and Chewie all basically in full cartoon mode. We're no longer referencing the movie. There are no more movie stills to reference. It's just Howard Chicken drawing, you know, He-Man hair, whatever the hell that is. That's good. These are good. I like that. Same with that. Like So now he's back to drawing it pretty cool. Blue line. Looks like this panel was supposed to have dialogue in it. <clears throat> doesn't need it though this is good this uh, this whole sequence of chewy being awesome yeah this is good don't rush him and blast your face more big growl yeah see i like that like we're in the comic you can make chewy really big really expressive powerful looking much better like in the in the movies he it's chewy of course you love him but not a lot of acting ability in that get up. Not sure why he looks so stoned. Even the lip. I think it's on purpose. <laughs> Carry my stuff, Chewie. Aw, Beast Burden didn't make it. And it was a Bantha. Yeah, he didn't even try. Love this. So even though in some of the previous issues Shaken would just draw these real thick black lines as more of a honestly just a fast way of drawing it not really so much for the best effect but the fastest one this though looks great this is like Frank Miller same with this <laughs> at least they make a joke out of it <laughs> there you Chewie, you're strong. Carry all my stuff. Carry this body. <laughs> Walk all the way to town. And then, oh, I'm so thirsty. That was hard. Han being a cad. Ooh, that's an interesting looking Chewbacca. Oh, right, the introduction. I don't know who this is. I didn't ever read the comic book, but the, the rabbit character that I always thought was so stupid. So there's like a rabbit, like a sexy woman, William Shakespeare with a lightsaber for some reason. Fisherman. I don't I don't know. I don't get it. Oh, that's cool. You can see the pencils. So well on the original this I know that they had the uh the artist and stuff up here. I was looking for a colorist one time, ran across the original work of this and they didn't have the colorist listed, they had the color guide. Like all the colors written, all the codes for them written around it. Also, cool thing about this, about shaking, draws feet, draws them real well. Feet, not afraid to draw feet. See, that's back to being a bantha. It's a very weird page though, like this guy, space pirate or whatever, like standing up and it like goes over half of the face down here. Also, there's a lot of duotone on this page, I guess. Yeah, that's duotone. Uh, oh, cool, fun. Drew a little picture with the duotone. This is just where you drop a chemical on and it, and it brings out lines in the page to look like it's shaded. I think he intentionally morayed a screen tone here. It's kind of cool to make a, make a sphere. Sexy lady, space get up. There's the rabbit. 
lots of anthropomorphic stuff in this issue. And from now on, kind of. Look at that. It's so good, though. Reminds me of that scene in Shrek with the Puss in Boots where he looks cute. Gorgeous. Very, how cartoony is that? Like, it's, like there's a Bugs Bunny looking character, so we're going to make it Bugs Bunny-ish. This looks great. This is an excellent looking page. Han looking all swashbuckling. <laughs> Muscles rippling through his shirt. This is the most muscular Harrison Ford. Love that. A lot, actually. Love that design. Looks like a fisherman on the cover, but that's cool looking. So you can tell just this is getting a lot less referenced to anything in the Star Wars universe. This is starting to look like just Howard shaking comic books. Hell with backgrounds. It's just going to be filled with word balloons, right? Another cover that was reproduced. Now that looks good. Bantha's looking like Bantha's again. Duotone bringing out the background. Very cool sky. I bet you it looks great in color. I think that is actually a panel taken from Star Wars, the movie. Maybe. It's a good looking 3PL. And I think by this point, what are we on, issue 7 or 8 or something like that, they, they kind of stopped caring if it looked like Carrie Fisher anymore. It just had to be the girl. Even though they have two now, but she's got huge hair, so, you know, whatever. And all the backgrounds, the backgrounds don't need to look like anything, just sci-fi. Boy, he's changed look. Who needs to be on model? Excellent. Chewbacca. Yeah. More. Awesome. And there, see? Look, it looks like Shakespeare. It's got the goatee. His hair straight now. Now, if y'all are ready for the money shot, this is going to be cool. Let's see if I can get it all into one page here. So, for those who don't know, Vader with the red eyes, uh, which is actually in the movie, but you can rarely tell. Um, this is the very first promotional piece of artwork for Star Wars. It came out in 1976. It was uh, unveiled at San Diego Comic-Con in 76. I think that's right. But yeah, it, it is the first Star Wars piece. wings and TIE fighters and the bombers and the guns and pink lightsabers because they didn't know it's freaking cool though oh yeah the very first one love the line work god it's so good so cool Howard Chaykin doesn't consider himself a painter of any sort or any renown or whatever he said nonsense this is cool as hell it's also very expensive if you can find a copy Okay. Boy, that cover took a beating. Behemoth from below. You can see how all this yellowed, but the word balloons that they pasted on are fine. That's a good monster. Looks like a behemoth. <laughs> Looks like a rug. That's funny. Like a little... One of those dogs with all the fur... And then a head popped on it. Again, not so much Star Wars looking, but cool. I like this hair. Boy, blue line and white out everywhere. Ames lettering lines. Now the bunny has a floppy thing in the middle of his head. That's good looking. What is this? It's a weird page size. 
I think it's duotone too. You can see the lines in it. Like they accidentally got exposed. Interesting. So I guess this is all duotone line. Yeah, you can tell there. Pretty cool looking page. Never know when Shaken's gonna take his time. Man, <laughs> William Shakespeare. That's a good panel, good directional device. Like whenever it's pointing that way, they're all looking that way. It's that way. <laughs> okay, now, Shaken's off the book. But this is Walt Simonson. And like I said at the beginning, I am not the hugest fan of this one. It does make it look a little more like Star Wars, though. Freaking bell bottoms. Ugh. <laughs> Even he has these wide calf things. Love this. Very cool with that screen tone with the light middle. Freaking cool. Precursor to the Spider-Man kiss. Yep, that's screen tone. It's a rabbit flying a spaceship. Who cares? All right, then we're back to our characters. We got Luke, Vader with freaking bell bottoms on. I don't like the way he draws lightsabers either. I do like the gun blasts. Those are cool. Got kind of a beefy 3PO. His head's too far that way. That's a, that's a mistake I'd make right there. Death Star's freaking awesome looking though. Eighty people with stormtroopers. And now we're not have, we don't have anything to do with our main characters. We're back to the B tier guys. That's a good cartooning expression. This is so interesting. Just the party makeup. I like that grass. See, he shades the bottom of ships. Okay, I can tell these are Banthas. What the hell, though? Weird face. Very Barbarella. That, uh, that's, why does he make it look like bell bottoms? God, it's driving me nuts. Uh, that screen tone, that's the stuff that uh, Michael Golden's gonna use a lot in the next book. I like this. These brush lines? Okay, yeah, they are, they're brush lines. So, instead of using a speed lines, like from, sometimes you can get in screen tone, you use screen tone for the shading on the face and then brushed all this. I'm not sure who the inker is on this one. Here we go. Now we're to Michael Golden. Eh, uh, yeah. He was a fantastic cartoonist. Don't know why a droid has a lightsaber, but this, see, this looks similar to the one that Walt Simonson did, but it's still cooler. Like it's not so, I don't know, those rigid staccato lines that he drew on. I didn't, I didn't like those at all. This is good though. Oh, this is based on, like he redrew her shoulder? Oh no, it's a tentacle that goes over her, okay. Here's that screen tone I was talking about. It's real, these little fine, uneven dots. This is gorgeous. See, this, even though that doesn't look like Carrie Fisher, that kind of looks like a young Mark Hamill, kind of. But this feels like Star Wars. This has the, the analog toggles on the some control panel. It's got the TIE fighters outside. It's got the gun turret with the primitive targeting system that has no business in the future. It looks amazing.
good shading too. This is the uh, precursor world of Jim Lead where there's not hatching, it's just line work, precise line work at that. Again, primitive analog controls for these future ships, but it's so cool. It feels like Star Wars. Lay a butt shot for some reason. She shouldn't be in that outfit anymore. <laughs> oh, apparently they're pants. So this is when they get onto a living ship. Good expression. Again, this is how, it's just showing how it works. Like he's making sure that the panels work, the pages work. It doesn't have to be perfect likenesses. Good hand work. A bit muscly for Luke, but still looks good. Like that too. Very cool Star Wars. I also like this this fading out and the fog, the feet. When this effect is done well, it looks so cool. It looks intimidating and interesting. And then if it's done bad, it looks lazy. <laughs> I don't want to draw feet. But I do echo Jim Lee when he says, feet are boring. He can draw a foot. But why? Back to Howard Shaken. Uh, these are for Pizzazz Comics. I guess it's just like a way the, that they released some of the Star Wars stories. This looks great. I think this is all great. The pay stubs faded this time. Does that look like Luke? No. No, it does not. Does it matter? Eh, not really. Good face. His hair length changes all the time. I like this. This is what Howard Shagan ends up doing with the stormtroopers. They just have black face, black mustache. Or the, you know, the little shadow line underneath their mouth thing. <laughs> Look at that. Like little circle eyes. <laughs> Looks surprised. But it works, you know. You know they're stormtroopers. Luke now has flowing locks. Walt Simonson now. Claus Jansen, famous for his work with Frank Miller on Daredevil and Dark Knight and others. Also for his own work on uh, Daredevil, which was excellent. Love that face in the turret. Good job, Leia. I guess he really likes wearing that outfit. I mean... Yeah, I guess that's an explosion. Kind of looks like it got hit with jelly. This is good, though. I like that. It's got fingerprints showing the explosion. That is a very nimble 3PO. This is better Walt Simons and stuff who is an excellent cartoonist, just wasn't a fan of his work on this so much. This is good, though. Like I could do better. Really good reflection, actually. Making it look like he's actually looking at something instead of just, you know, get, it point the cr get, get across the point that you're just, you have a reflection. I like that with the whiteout and then the uh, fingerprints to make the explosion. And Klaus Jansen has a lot of tricks. Oh, cool. Can't see it. Here we go. Move this up. There are notes at the bottom of the page. Mary, these marks on wall are blaster scorches. Very cool. Okay, so the colorist is Mary Severin. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. 
love that shading on 3PO. Using the fingerprints on 3PO to show ref like a, a dull reflection on the shadowed side of his face. That's really cool. <laughs> See, I, I don't know, <laughs> but Walt Simonson, he manages to make it look like Star Wars again. Like, it's, that's good, too. And Coward Shagan abandoned that after, you know, a few issues. It's a tone thing. He mentioned it. He said that uh, the movie didn't look like the stills that he got. So he had all those stills. And he said just didn't, the it, what he ended up seeing as the movie looked more like the uh, Macquarie paintings, like the, the poster painting, than it did the stills for the film. Which, again, the film stills aren't great, so it makes sense. <laughs> Scared 3PO, that's good. Okay, now we're to posters and stuff at the end. Really cool lightsaber. Not. Good blasters, though. Yes. Yes. So cool. Very famous cover. Also, two bucks whenever these were, like, comic books were 35 cents. That's a, quite a markup. That looks really cool. I, they, man, that airbrush on, on previous pages, though. So good for lightsabers. This is cool. Love that Alec Guinness reference. That's cool. Drew Vader entirely cut out of screen tone. The more excellent Alec Guinness. I'd freaking buy that too if I could. That is cool. And this is that staccato lightsaber thing I don't like so much. Just that mark, that even marking just kind of ruins the look of a lightsaber this is cool using screen tone for that really good use of black gray white gray black very cool and we're done just a little intro for one of the scripts that had George Lucas's approval on it uh, he had to approve all of the scripts and it's kind of neat even later like I mean 10 years after this he was still approving scripts for comics and it was really cool whenever he would say yeah that's cool or you know I'll finally approve it but you know I don't like this and he makes revisions all revisions are included like he, he does make sure things kind of were in canon but he did also let a lot of the artists and writers changed some things and it was pretty cool like um it was a dark empire where luke went to the dark side he eventually approved that but he he had some objections made some changes made some suggestions huge blown up tie fighters this panel's like so probably about that big in real life made it this big pretty cool and that's it leia looking tough um that is the Star Wars Artifact Edition. And I really enjoyed it. It's very cool. So uh, this format I totally stole from cartoonist Kayfabe and uh, a guy named Michael Troy and another guy from years ago named Jared Osborne who's still on YouTube and you should follow him if you get a chance. I'll include links in the description. Really, I did this because um, I hadn't seen this Artifact Edition yet on any of the channels. And it's kind of like a I don't know. It's kind of like a fun way to share them. Almost like a book club. Like, hey, you guys don't have this one. Check this out. It's really cool. And um, if you find it, I would recommend it. It's pretty cool. Um, just as a, uh, in this case, literally as an artifact, even if you don't like all the art in it, it's still really cool to know, like, okay, this was made before the movie came out in a lot of, a lot of, a huge portion of it anyway, a lot of ways. And it ended up looking really cool, really good, and how they, what changes they made, what they didn't. I especially liked Howard Chagan's Vader. And he didn't have to do much with it, just make him looming. And he managed to do that with just darks and lights. Extremely cool. 